Hey everybody, what's up? Donnie B here, Learn Pro Recording, LPR, the business of making music. I'm not only here to show you how to do a little recording, but more importantly, or just as important, how to get paid for it. Man, come on, make this your job. Come on, make this your career. This is a lot of fun, and you still make the money you need to make. So come on over. I got some stuff for you. Hey, today I got some stuff I want to talk to you about. Um, you know, school is ending. It's, you know, uh, April, May, June, that kind of area. And I've been seeing a lot of resumes coming through my office as a studio owner, studio manager. And I've got some tips for you to help you stand out, to help you get that intern gig, man, help you get that assistant gig, get into that studio so you can stay into that studio. Got some stuff for you. Let's run the intro and we'll get to it. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Donnie B here, Learn Pro Recording. So I've got some stuff for you today I want to talk to you about. But of course, of course, got some free stuff for you. Don't forget the Studio Growth Formula. This is a quick PDF that you can download. It's going to help you build, grow, and scale your studio into something that could possibly help take over your day job money. Hashtag quit your day job. You know you, you know you want to. You know you want to, man. Hey, look, I built all this up from a laptop on my dining room table, and, and that's where this all came from. This is how this all became a thing. I'm here to help you do the same thing. So I want you to download the information from today. It's just basically the slides to help you go back and, and look at it. There's also some links in there that you might want to click. Just go to learnprorecording.com forward slash intern. It's going to help you get in, help you stay in. It's good. It's just here to help you out. You know what I mean? So I'm going to run these slides for you right now. But remember, you can always reach out to me, info at learnprorecording.com. Again, my name is Donnie B, and we're going to get to this right now. So you want to be an intern or an assistant in a recording studio. Look, I got some tips that's going to help you get up in there. It's going to help you get in and stay in. But this is simply amazing. You're taking the first steps to get in to be able to learn from others that do this for a living. Okay, look, what a concept, man. You're learning while doing, and you're learning from somebody that knows. Why. You know what? That kind of experience is priceless if you do it right. But getting into a studio as an intern usually takes some special treatment. You have to know someone. You have to have a connection. Maybe your cousin already works there, or your dad knows a guy. You get it? Absolutely. So these are some tips from an actual studio owner that not only gets tons of resumes and potential engineers reaching out to see if he has any engineer positions or intern positions open. But that same guy was at one time an intern at a pretty big recording studio. So he can help you navigate the oversaturated pool of potential interns to help you get the gig. Look, that guy is me, DB, Donnie Baker. I'm from ES Audio Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California. And I started my career at a recording studio as an intern. Tip number one. Do some research. Look around in your area. Don't, don't be having to drive two hours to get to a studio that you want to intern at. That's not going to help you at all because you're going to get frustrated about the drive. You're going to be late too many times because traffic's going to happen. I mean, I don't know about you guys wherever you are, but in Los Angeles, we're kind of known for our traffic. And if, you know, you got to drive two hours to get to a studio, two and a half hours one way, two and a half hours back, and you're working basically essentially for free, that's going to get old pretty quick. So find something in your neighborhood. It doesn't have to be a big studio. It doesn't have to be large. It doesn't have to be huge. But, you know, it has to be a studio because you're going to learn from the guy at the studio. You're going to learn how he does things, not only in the studio, but you're going to learn how he runs the business of the studio. This is the business of making music, and you guys need to learn how to do that. I mean, there's so much that you got to gotta learn how to write a resume. You got to learn how to write a, a cover letter. You got to learn how to write uh, an invoice. You got to learn how to get clients or do the booking system. How do you book? Yeah, there's just so much. I mean, keeping track of the schedule. There's so much that you need to know, not only about the gear, but also about how to run that business. Okay. So these tips are just here to help you out. Don't, don't get mad at me because I'm just trying to help you out. All right. So Look, don't just send a bunch of resumes to a bunch of random studios. Maybe find one that's close to your area and do a little research, man. Maybe you've been to that studio before as a client. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you maybe you know somebody who knows somebody who's been there. Or just do the research into a studio that's close by you, near your home, and find the name of the manager. Find the name of the owner and direct your resume to that person. 
okay? Do a little research into what kind of gear they might have that you might be familiar with. You might say, oh, hey, dude, I see you guys have the, the TubeTech CL1B. That's my favorite compressor. I got to use that at so-and-so studio when I was an intern there, or I got to use that, that 1176 compressor when I was in school at blah, blah, blah school. You know what I mean? You might know, you might know some of their clients that's on their list that they've worked with. You may have worked with them. You may be friends with the, with the guitar player, or you might be friends with the drummer in the band. You, you could say, hey, I see that so-and-so's band worked with you on, you know, and, and you guys put them on your list. And that's that I know that guy. I know the guitar player. We're good friends. We hang out. You know, that at least shows the owner that you're at least interested in some of the stuff they have going on at their studio. Regardless, if you just send a blanket email to multiple studios, uh, this does happen. Make sure you blind carbon copy the list. I don't want to see that you're sending a random resume email form to 45 studios in your town. Okay. If I see that, if I see that you've sent a list, you just sent uh, this resume to a list of studios. I don't go any further. I just put you, I just delete it. I'm not, I don't need, I, I don't need that. I want somebody that's interested in working at my studio and learning from working with me and my engineers and producers. Okay. So tip number two, dude, this is like, I know it's super not important or it may not be important to some people, but double check your spelling and your grammar when you're putting your resume and your cover letter together. All right. Make sure that you double check your grammar and your spell. I look, I know this sounds like a minor detail, but as a studio owner, if I get a resume from a supposed college graduate asking me for one of the few coveted intern positions that we might have available, the least you could do is try to spell things correctly and use proper grammar. All right, maybe not use your friend texting technique, like saying, I'll be the best intern forever with the number four in EVR, or you are the best studio that I found using the letter U and the letter R. Don't do that. It, I... I'd be wanting a job. Don't know. When I see these, I delete them. I do not go any further. That may tell me that you guys really aren't interested in getting your foot in the door of a prestigious recording studio, okay? Some of you may remember the record plant in Hollywood. In the 80s and early 90s, everybody wanted to be an intern there, man. There was a long wait list to get in there as an intern. Those interns were world famous. They all wore nice button-up shirts with their name embroidered on them. Look, the manager, Rose Mancherney, she ran that place like a perfect machine. The interns from there really knew their jobs and probably went on to do great things in the music industry after being an intern there. Tip number three, make sure that you send a cover letter with your resume. Try to stand out as an applicant. There's going to be many multiple emails filling up the studio manager's inbox, especially around graduation time of the year. You know, right now, April, May, June, that kind of thing. Traditional resume types are preferred. Keep it simple, man. Don't send a bunch of useless information. I mean, look, it's impressive that you won your sixth grade spelling bee, but I don't need to know that. And it might not be relevant to what we're looking for in a potential intern. That might be a better story to bring up while we're sitting around bullshitting about useless stuff after you become an intern at the studio. Look, don't get mad at me for saying things like this. I'm only trying to help. I don't have a filter and it kicks in and I can't help it. I'm my my whole position is trying to help you get in. Okay? Tip number 4. Remember what grandma always said, the squeaky wheel gets to grease. That's right. Be squeaky. What do I mean by this? Look, do a follow-up call. Maybe the day or two after you send your resume with a cover letter or an introduction letter, call the studio and ask for the studio owner or manager by name. Ask them if they saw your resume and if they had any questions about your resume. And by that time, they're going to know that you might be the guy, you might be the potential applicant to come in, okay? So seriously, one of the things that bothers me is I get a resume from a potential applicant and they look good, you know? But then I don't hear from them again, like, all right. Maybe they're just not interested anymore. Or maybe they got a gig at another studio. Whatever. What If I don't hear from you again, I'm probably not even going to try to remember that you sent me a resume. I'm just not randomly going to call somebody who included me on a list of all the studios in Los Angeles that they got from doing a Google search. Okay? I'm not going to call that guy. But if you call me back, if you call, do a follow-up call, 
and you say, hey, or even a follow-up email, at the, at the very least, a follow-up email a couple of days later going, hey, I sent you a resume. Just wondering if you got it, making sure, wondering if you had any questions about it, let me know. Okay? That makes, it just makes it so much better and so much bigger. And it makes you stand out as an applicant for the coveted intern position or the assistant position, whatever we might have going on. Again, it's helping you stand out. Okay? So, you got a personal interview. You're going into the studio to meet with the manager or the owner. Be professional. All right? Don't show up dressed like you're on your way to the beach. And don't go the other extreme. Don't look like you're going to your prom right after the interview. All right? Be you, man. Be comfortable. But also, be aware who asked you to come in for an interview. All right? Another tip about this subject. Don't show up smelling like you just put out the blunt on the way in the door. There's a time and a place for such things. I mean, honestly, we do work in the music industry. This is the music business we're talking about here. So... So just don't do it on your way to your interview, okay? And again, the other extreme. Maybe not show up like you're hitting the club like right after. You know what I mean? And you know the ladies love the cologne, but the studio owner might not love it and might not ever call you back. Try to be neutral in the smell department, not too extreme either way. Again, don't be offended. I'm only trying to help. I tell you this because all these events have actually happened and are true. Those applicants probably did not get the internship or the assistant position they were looking for. Tip number six. Okay, so you got the gig as an intern in a studio. Be on time. This is one of the biggest things, man. Be on time. We have a saying in this business that can translate to interns, apprentices, engineers, and assistants. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. Look, read that again, just in case you missed it. I'm going to leave it here for a second. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. Look, I did a, I'm going to, I'm going to link to it in the description down below, but I did a, I did a video a couple of weeks ago about how to not only get the gig, but how to keep the gig. This is part of that. Okay. I'll link to it down there. So you guys can go check that out as well, in case you missed it. All right. Tip number seven, dude, Make yourself valuable and irreplaceable. Look, be the intern that's not afraid to do whatever. Get involved, but don't bug the manager or the engineers too much. Get involved when and where you can. Look, we had an intern one time, and the first thing he would do when he got to the studio for a shift was check to see if the trash needed to be taken out. Next, without being asked, he would go grab the vacuum and vacuum the main hallways, whether he thought whether we asked him to or not, okay? He took responsibility for these kind of tasks without being asked every time and took care of them. That same intern now has a key to my studio and is one of the main engineers that I call when we need help with sessions. Plus, he has his own client base that he brings into the studio to work with, and he makes pretty good money doing it. So the point is, make yourself valuable, and the studio owner will not want you to leave. Tip number eight, don't be the other kind of intern. Look, there's an alternative to this first guy. That's the intern that lets us know that we made a mistake by having them work with us here at the studio. They come in and only want to work on their stuff without putting in any exchange, or they bother the actual sessions when we do let them sit into a session with a client. That's cool and all, but you ain't gonna last long, man. We're probably not gonna ask you to come back. One of the worst things you can do as well is, is ask the client if they want to buy your beats. So let you say, oh, hey, by the way, I'm a producer. I got some beats. You want to listen to them? Dude, it, never do that. We're quietly just going to take you off the schedule. Or we're just going to, you might call us and say, hey, are you too busy for me to come in and intern at the studio? The answer is going to be yes. Yes, we are. Don't be this intern. Be like the first guy. All right. So, okay. So what's next? So hopefully you got some great ideas from this presentation that's going to help you not only get your foot in the door of a studio, but it's going to help keep you there. As long as you work it right, you will be successful. You will only improve as you learn and grow and gain the all-important experience of working in a real recording studio. Dude, soak it up. Keep it with you. The next thing you know, you're being called to the Grammy stage to receive a statue for some awesome record that you worked on. Look, trust me, that has happened. Good luck, and remember, no one is simply going to hand this to you, dude. You have to go get it. All right, 
And if you want more information, you can always reach out to me here, info at learnprorecording.com or support at learnprorecording.com. The studio that I'm in right now is ES Audio Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California, esaudio.com. In case you guys want to send a resume, this is Donnie B. I'm from Learn Pro Recording, the LPR, the business of making music. This is your spot to not only help you build, grow, and scale your studio, but it's also to help you hashtag quit your day job. Reach out if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns. Donnie B., I'm out of here. Peace.